Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are well and subscribed. As you can see by the title of today's video, we're going to be doing something different and very interesting. This is something that I've been wanting to do for a while now, ever since our YouTube did remember that. And then I was like, you know when you, not that I was doubting myself, I kind of was actually, let me not lie to you guys. You know there are a couple of YouTubers who actually focus on like recaps uh reviews of like shows and movies and whatever and they're doing really well and i was like mm, but you know there are any people doing that and whatever then i woke up today i was like mm -mm, so what i can also join them you know so i want to see how this goes if you guys do enjoy please do let me know request um shows and movies that are trending at the time for me to recap them because it's like i'm not going to recap something that people are over you know but let me show you guys how prepared i am cheers besties today i'm going to be doing um a recap slash review of young famous and african which is a series on netflix about it's literally in the name you know about successful famous rich african celebrities they go from presenters tv personalities actors artists you know literally everyone is in the mix all right the show has two seasons and i'm obviously going to be reviewing the second season which dropped like less than two weeks ago i might be a bit late i probably am but it doesn't matter all right so how this thing is gonna go it's just gonna be me critiquing the different characters because so before i get to the cast members can we please talk about how scripted that show is it kind of turn me off a bit turn me off that it put me off a bit the first season was scripted like you could tell here and there but with the second season it's like they weren't even trying to hide it like what the mumudimu but yeah and also another thing that bothered me was we never got to see them in their houses you know with the first season we they were always at their well not always but we did see them a couple of times at their houses and it felt more real but with the second season they got in the middle of the day. so on to the cast members Let's start with Swanky. Guys, what happened about Swanky? What's his problem? He has main character syndrome. It was cute in the first season. I sort of liked it. Like, I don't know. He just gave me that vibe. And in this season, he was just like, first of all, being late to every event. And he literally said that it's his intention to be late at every event because he wants everybody to look at him because he's the god of fashion or whatever i mean he can dress but is he really the god of fashion i don't think we can give him that title because and honestly i feel like there was absolutely no need for them to drag his um fight with annie up until the very end because episode four we were tired or oh, well, i was tired i was just like okay can we please just get this over and done with are they gonna make peace or not if they make peace cool if they don't it's also fine but like they dragged it up until the very end only for them to have like a um exaggerated reunion where now swanky starts styling her at the restaurant i'm just like hmm, hmm. on to diamond to keep it short i don't like diamond i don't like diamond he's a typical man a typical baby dad he's very toxic he really is he sort of has this attachment to his baby mama which we will move on to after this zari uh, but he still wants to hoe around but he doesn't want her to have anyone else which is very weird and then when he you know hooks up with someone or wants to hook up with someone he tells them how zari is obsessed with him meanwhile he's the one who's obsessed with her like and then he spills their not secrets, but like their private conversations to the girls just to like get in her pants. He needs to get his act together. It's either he wants to be with her or not because that ain't cutting it. That's a typical baby daddy behavior. Also, as women, can we please stop fighting over men? Like if we're going to fight, let it be something between us. There must not be a man in the middle of it because having men as, a com as common denominators in fights is rather embarrassing because we know how men are. Not worth it. Is that lady really a billionaire? 
mean, she does have money. You can see that she has money, but billionaire status. I don't know about that. But, um, yo. Yeah, I don't think she's a billionaire. That's how I feel. But what do I know? What do I know? I'm not even, like, a million. I don't even have 10,000 rand, so please let me not drag her for that. But I liked her energy this season. She was, like, calm. Um, apart from the Fontana um drama she was a bit calm calmer than last season she was more of like a kind of demo she was more of like a like a mom and yeah she was calm i don't really have much to say about her because she didn't really give us that much apart from the fantana nonsense but we got that out of the way they were fighting over a man embarrassing really and um no but she also seems like she has some so it's like a mild attachment it's not like obsession mild obsession not like diamonds one that's like he's not even trying to hide it but her explaining that you know if diamond was here i'll put his head here he wouldn't even care about you i'm just like really but also i feel like she's too much of a woman to be with someone like diamond that's something i don't get diamond is like such a boy you know apart from the fact that he's a playboy he's like you wanna you wanna moving on to the so-called so mom of the group guys who told kanyumba that she was the mom of the group or like the queen of the group can that person please come here? I don't tell her why. Did you see the monster that she created? Guys, I love Kanye, but I've always loved Kanye. Um, she's such a cool, she's such a cool lady. But like, ever since the first season, I saw like a side to her that obviously we had never seen as the public. We don't know her personally. Like she's low-key, not even low-key, she's high-key messy. She wants to be the mom of the group call people out as if given up hey i mean as friends we do call each other out like as true friends but there's a way that she do it apart from that scene where she saw at andile annie and was it swanky i think where she saw at them pe people's parents by the way Annie's older than kanye right she probably is andile is also older than her to call we're friends yes but to call your elders in front of people do you know how embarrassing that is and like i said apart from that whenever she tries to um solve people's issues it always seems like she's not doing it to actually solve the issues that's what i noticed she's a very messy lady low-key messy and on top of that she as much as she says everyone in this group has achieved the most here we're peers here nobody's above the other she feels like she's above the others that's why whenever someone who seems to be doing well or doing sorry whenever someone who seems to be who seems or is doing better than her she starts moving weird she starts hating them we saw that in the first season with zari she did the same with your girl b and she was guys kanye and bonang greeted each other they did did they do that kiss or like that kiss hike thing whatever whatever and then the diary session she says I don't know when I like that. Bonang and I are not friends. Bonang and I have never been friends. And that's because I've never understood Bonang. And when I don't understand someone, <laughs> I distance myself because I don't trust you. That's scary. Bro, these are not your kids. What do you mean you want to understand someone? I did each other. You know what? But um, I love Kanye. I love her on Instagram. I love her when she's doing her interviews, when she's with other people who are in the same or similar industry as her and are doing you know better than her she just becomes very weird and it's hard to watch because girl i like you and then moving on to annie annie please come here we need to talk we need to have a serious chat why do you keep letting this man push you through all of this guys annie is dating the biggest that man will literally do whatever with whoever and he doesn't even care. guys he's not ashamed i wonder how you can't shame the shameless he is not ashamed there was a part um i don't know if you guys remember it no you can't not remember the part where they were having dinner and he said something along the lines of men are wired in a way that like you know you can love your wife you can love your girlfriend but still go and you know sleep with other women that's not emotional it's just physical and that's just how men are wired guys you're having dinner with your wife and your friends and you say that 
Guys, Annie was heartbroken. She literally walked away. I don't know. I don't like that man. I don't even think I'm going to critique him because that's all I have to say about him. He's manipulative. He's a gaslighter. He's controlling. Like, he's just, he's just a mess. But it makes sense because, you know, apparently he and Annie started dating when Annie was 15. And, or well, they met when she was 15 and he was like 26 or something like that. So, you know how grooming works and, um, yeah, it's just a very sad situation. So, you sort of, I mean... It is like kind of weird that Annie's like letting him put through, letting her, let, what? Letting him, letting him put her through this. That's why it's so important to consider the fact that, you know, these people started dating when she was very young and he was well into his adulthood because the dynamics between a groomer and his victim or a predator and um, their victim are very, they're hard to understand, but they do give you insight on like how the mind games that they play on the victims work like Annie probably just feels like you know she can't live without him she can't do this without him he made her she only made it you know all of that stuff so um it's really sad to see a black woman going through this a talented black woman um and you can see that she's hasha momo wedding you know and and it's that man also guys why is Tubaba on the show why was he on the show like genuinely asking and then we have Andile guys I don't know how to feel about Andile. Andile is, he says a whole lot of nothing. Like, for advice, but it doesn't really mean anything. Also, why would you want to go seek relationship advice from Annie and Tubaba? Why? Why? But it kind of makes sense. The situation with his baby mom was like, another thing, guys, and I can't figure Andile out. He shocks me every single time. Andile, there's having a time. And then there's been like Andila, guys. Andila's baby mamas are literally the same person. How? And also, like, how did the, those ladies actually get with Andile? I mean, Andile. Yeah, Andile. You know, pretty cool guy, though. I, yeah, he's pretty cool. One with like little to no drama. I think he has the least drama on the show. Um, yeah, but he, he's very weird. I don't like the fact that they made him this motivational speaker. But one thing I can say is, he's what Kanye thinks she is. The thing about him, when he sits people down, you can actually see that he's doing it for the sake of peace, not her gamugosi. Like, other people, he actually does care about those people. Even though, like, he does give these quotes, uh, these motivational quotes, he's, the advice that he gives is like, what are you actually saying? Like, what are you saying? He sounds so deep. He has this voice. It's like, oh, he's actually saying something when he's not. But anyway, moving on to Naked and Kaylee, it's... Okay, before we get to the negatives, I like their relationship throughout the season. They weren't fighting. They were cool. You can see that they're in a good good place. They're okay. They're in love. Um, it was really cute. I like Kaylee. Kaylee's, you know, she will speak her mind. She doesn't care what Kanye says, who, what who says, whatever. If she feels like something was wrong, she does it. And then... Um, yeah pretty cool girl she doesn't in the first season she just like used to fly with the wind but now she she does that on her ground pretty cool girl naked is also a bit better this season like it their relationship is way better and yeah okay so we're at the last two fantana i don't know what to say about her um hot body though I like her body i like the fact that she doesn't let people walk over her although she does exaggerate a bit at first i was like i'm so glad diamond has finally made his match because she was just like do you know how many men i'm with right now i don't care about diamond i don't really love diamond i'm not looking for anything from diamond we have an agreement i was like oh my girl until she just started believing these lies and i was like oh my goodness what is going on what is actually good guys what is there about diamond maybe i'm the problem why do these girls all fall for him like that especially his lies let's talk about his lies guys she was fighting for diamond that's what I didn't really like about her, but she's okay. Um, does she need to come back next season? I don't know. Probably not. Probably not. On to the last one. Miss B. Bonang Matiba. Bonang Matiba, guys. The original Mugel. I don't know if I should critique her because I actually really do like her. Like, a lot, guys, I love Bonang. Like, I love her a lot. But, um, I just feel like this show wasn't for her you know it it actually reason guys we know bonang we've seen her on a reality show we know what kind of gigs she takes 
um but this show this is a messy show and that's not who she is but also again that confrontation with Luis. oh i don't critique Luis because i don't really have much to say about him cool guy though down to earth um yes but um a lot of people are saying bonang was wrong for that but this is what i think okay it all goes back to swanky swanky lied to bonang that's why she reacted like that and um although it, it, she might have no she should have toned it down a bit i do get it you know you're a you're a brand as big as bonang you know for what she's known for now for people to go on an international show and say that you left a gig that you were booked for just because your babe didn't have flowers and you know that's not the type of person that you are that's not right that's not right but um like i said it goes back to swanky swanky lied to her he needs to apologize to her and to louis oh him and louis actually ended up making peace but he needs to apologize for that situation because um i wonder how she feels now looking at the show and seeing that her friend swanky actually lied and twisted the whole thing that's just how i feel it's swanky's fault also as much as kanye says we've all achieved the most here true they have achieved quite a bit you know all those people but bonang when comparing her to all those people i feel like she's on a she's in a league of her own you know um not to say she must look down on them but like give on i mean the fact that bonang signed a contract just to appear on that show for a few episodes and netflix was using her the most to market the the show i mean come on <laughs> they knew exactly what they were doing and i can say for a fact that bonang definitely got them more viewers this season because you know we love Bonang. um yeah i just wish she had gotten a bit easy on who's this Luish, but yeah i mean you know swanky when i catch you i would just like to give the show a rating um one thing i like about the show is that um these people confront each other they might do it in a childish manner but i mean we enjoy it we're there for the drama as kim k would say the drums we're there for the drums um yeah that's what i like they confront guys best believe if there's a problem they will do it they might run around but eventually they will confront each other um what don't i like about it it's too scripted and that just ruins everything shows can be scripted but let's go jumpy because that means you don't respect us and it just looks fake once you notice it's just like okay what is going on it feels like you're watching a soap or like a movie but overall i think it was like a six six point five out of ten that's how i feel guys let's speak about the trailer proposal what was that before i end this video no what was that what what was that trailer proposal thing can you really set up naked for real kaylee did not deserve that guys trailer proposal what was I don't get it but um if you've reached this far thank you so much everyone please don't forget to recommend video ideas don't forget to like comment subscribe and share the video let me give you guys one more sip before i love and leave you guys